Hello, and welcome to a continuation of Oracle's virtual event series. My name is Chris Graham, and I'm here with my colleague, Chris Spofford. And today our topic as part of the Finance Transformation Series is On the Road to Intelligent Profitability. I'm a solutions architect for Oracle Analytic Applications Financial Services. I've joined Oracle in the past year, so it's been a bit of a bumpy ride. Prior to that, I spent over 20 years in the banking industry with functions across trading risk, treasury and operations, and most recently was the head of a loss forecasting platform initiative with a wholesale bank at JP Morgan. With me is Chris Spofford, a senior director of product management and product strategy, and this is for the Oracle performance management applications. Chris has over 30 years in a mix of banking, implementation consulting and product control roles. He's focused on working closely with our financial services partner companies to deploy best in class applications and help these client partners achieve their goals and, and maximize the overall value. What is at the core of what we wanna talk about today? I think that this sums it up fairly nicely. We need to use data to run the necessary models and calculations, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to the actionable insights that you can achieve. While researching this topic and thinking about this presentation, we ran across the following quote. I think it, it, it fits our view perfectly. If you're looking for profit and everything is already done, you'll probably already have to keep looking. And what is it you're looking for? Well, wouldn't it be helpful if you're able to ascertain the most profitable client segment up front? How would that change your overall strategy and approach? What are some of the challenges as we look at intelligent profitability? Why is it hard in the, in the profitability space? First off, you need to have a unified data source for all of the necessary models, engines, and reporting and analytical tools. Any changes in these data sources need to be available and persistent. Second, you need to calculate everything at the most granular level so that when you take a bottoms up approach, the results are meaning, meaningful and reconcile with the top down approach. Anything inflexible or opaque in the system's makeup creates a difficulty that is hard to reason and figure out for the client. The systems themselves are often one-off applications or siloed. Having no connectivity means a complex and error-prone flow. Outputs tend to be static. That flat file you email off or load into another system, we should be thinking of daisy chaining as much as possible to ensure the results we calculate have meaningful impact. Likewise, the rules and allocations are often inflexible and do not lead to rich or robust results. Lastly, and this is the most common issue, after all the data collection, cleansing, calculation, and review, there is no built-in capability to use the results in an actionable fashion, just running reports to produce a result for its own business purpose. So how does Oracle look to solve some of these problems? What have, what have we done in this space? How, how do we approach and solve some of the issues that I've just highlighted? First, let's create a purpose-driven data foundation. We need to store all of the inputs and outputs in one data store. Make this a single source of truth for all of the applications and reports. Next, calculate a lot. Process everything at a granular level. Allow for scaling and provisioning that daily processing becomes the norm. Make sure that the framework is modular and, and configurable. OFSA, or Oracle Financial Services Analytical Applications, is an ecosystem of applications that leverages this uni unified data source. This is also including the capability to call and support any client's proprietary or third party, party models or applications. The user needs to be in the driver's seat here, and we don't want to lock down any particular process or flow. Integration of analytics into the overall framework allows for reporting and analysis to come prepackaged, whether it's through a suite of pre-built reports and analytics or simply the flexibility of the offering. Having this be a main component rather than an afterthought allows for providing real business insight, leverage the multi-engine -en calculations to inform and guide the business, whether through client and product profitability, client lifetime value, next best offer, any of these create value through both cost savings and revenue generating strategies. What's the life cycle look like? How does Oracle intend tend to put this all together? Well, we know you're going to start with a wide range of, of data sources, and this will need to be brought into a unified database. Most institutions have myriad sources with more formats than we can count. Uh, 
once we get them into the unified database, then you have calculation engines doing the modeling work for you, for you and your data to produce results around transfer pricing, asset liability management, or what have you. Next, you need to look at creating some reporting and analytics for this data. Notice that it's coming from the unified database. And lastly, we'll try to transform this into some business actions. Now let's layer on some of the Oracle solutions. How do we get the data into the, the data source? Well, we have a tool called the Data Integration Hub. The whole idea here is, is that we recognize that clients have different sources of data from different applications. This tool is purpose-built in order to be able to integrate all of that data into our financial services data foundation. This is really the data store uh, of all data stores. It has all the inputs, the outputs, any of the data that we need for results uh, and truly the results themselves. Now, this data source and, and most of this solution can actually be done either on-premise or in the cloud. We don't need to look at one particular solution. Uh, we're very flexible amongst any of our clients and partners needs. The calculation engines that we're talking about are things like funds transfer pricing, profitability management, and asset and liability management. The reporting and analysis takes different for formats and forms, but overall is part of our overall performance analytics suite. Uh, this could be institutional performance analytics, retail performance analytics, or, or at an enterprise level. And then lastly, what are we talking about for insights regarding planning and strategy? Well, we have a, a very integrated balance sheet planning capability that can take most of this data as input and then allow the client to come up with strategies and planning going forward. Overall, we made it scalable. Uh, this overall process is able to ha handle massive amounts of data, large number of computations, and is truly suited to our clients' individual needs. With that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Chris. All right, thanks, Chris, for outlining the uh, challenges and benefits of deploying an enterprise profitability system uh, across an organization. These types of projects can be complex, but they have huge payoffs um, in that the profitability information can be developed at the lowest level of detail um, and, and ultimately rolled up across any number of dimensions to customer, the distribution channel, the product line, organization units, uh, or other strategic business units. Uh, the, the idea of the Oracle profitability solution is that we provide the capability to build out the profit and loss statements at this lowest level of granularity, the account level. And then we dimensionalize all of that account level data uh, so that it can be rolled up and, and analyzed. For example, this slide shows the build, the build out of the P&L from the bottom up, and you can easily view profit by customer channel, product, organization, unit, or any other dimension that you want to assign to the data. The next point that I wanted to talk about um, and explain in a little bit more detail is actually what we mean by profitability. And I've given an ex example here. So let, let's take a, a loan, a three-year loan, uh, fixed rate, um, and look at what the profit and loss over a one-month holding period would look like. So the first step in analyzing the profit and loss of, of an individual account, an individual loan, would be to, to start with the interest income that comes uh, against that loan over a month. And typically this is gonna be an input from this, the core banking system. There's no calculation needed here. This is something that probably is just fed in from the, from the core system along with the, the, uh, the attributes and uh, characteristics of the, of the individual loan. The next step in developing a profit and loss uh, involves the funds transfer pricing process, an FTP engine. Uh, the, funds transfer, the goal of the funds transfer pricing process is to assign a cost of funds, a matched rate cost of funds that exactly matches up against the characteristics of the loan. And in this case, we've assigned 2.45%. Um, the fund, you know, at Oracle, within the, the officer group, we have a, a world-class funds transfer pricing system that does this type of processing very well. But as I go through the P&L and explain the different uh, types of applications that are involved in develop a prof developing a profit and loss at an account level, it's, it's important to know that not every application has to come from Oracle. I mean, we would love if it does, and they're very well integrated. We've got great engines and, and uh, tightly integrated capabilities, but most customers tend to mix and match uh, some, you know, one or more capabilities from other third-party applications into this development of this P&L, and that's perfectly normal and, and, and definitely supported within the data foundation that Chris explained. Uh, the next step of the profit and loss uh, in generating the profit and loss statement is the operational cost. So the operational costs typically come from an allocation process and we have a profitability management 
cost allocation engine that allows you to, to, to drive costs down from top, top of the house cost pools based on driver information, statistical information, or you can push, you can develop costs from the bottom up using transaction uh, volumes and unit costs. And, and you can do a mix of both. And we typically see that happening. So a, some sort of a cost allocation system contributes to the development of the operational cost, the allocation of costs at an individual account level. The next level, um, what this gives you is two, two good pieces of information. You know, we've, we basically have the interest income interest expense, which tells us what the net interest margin looks like. We've subtracted the operational costs. So now we understand what the profit, which is not risk adjusted yet, um, what the profit from this individual loan looks like. And in this case, it's, it's a positive amount, which is a good sign. Um, we, can, we can bring in some inputs from a credit risk model. It can be an Oracle credit risk model or a third party model. And we can assign an expected loss. And once we've assigned that expected loss, then we uh, can now have a risk adjusted profitability number. And both the non-risk adjusted and the risk adjusted, the entire P&L for that matter, this, kind of in, this is the kind of information that we can deploy out through uh, an analytics capability. And again, in, in Oracle's case, it's the profitability analytics, cap, uh, profitability analytics application. But we can go further on the P&L. We can assign the risk-weighted assets using a credit risk model. We can ass assign the risk capital allocation using an economic capital or regulatory capital application. And once we've developed this, all of, we've assigned all of these risk adjustments, we've def def defined all of the P&L line items, uh, whatever level of detail you know, a customer decides they, they, they wanna see their information at, we're able to start reporting on risk metrics, right? the risk adjusted return uh, and the um, shareholder value added, economic value added kind of measures. So any of these kind of risk return measures can be developed based on the core elements of the profit and loss statement. So this is the kind of value that uh, you can see coming out of the, the profitability solution when developed at an account level. Then this kind of information becomes very easy to roll up across any sort of dimension and analyzed across customer segments, ranked in profitability deciles, and then all of the profitability information starts to become actionable and, and allows you to make better business decisions. So just to recap here, uh, Chris covered some of this in an earlier slide, but I wanna point out that the elements, the core elements of this solution are comprised of the financial services data foundation. This is the landing area for your, all of your account and transaction level data. This is the place where all of the history is stored. It, it, there are operational processing areas, there are reporting marts, all contained within this data foundation. Running on top of that, that data are a set of engines and core to the profitability solution is the Oracle profitability management cost allocation engine. It's a high volume, highly scalable cost allocation engine that handles any type of allocation that's built for purpose um, for financial services use cases. And finally, once you've developed and enriched all of that account level data uh, and profitability information, then you need a way to, to distribute it out to the business units, to your lines of business and to your consumers of, of this type of information. And that's where the performance analytics capability comes in, where you have pre-built reports and dashboards and the ability to customize and do data visualizations off of you know, the single reconciled data source that's been enriched through all of this processing. So we'd love to talk, this is just a, a brief introduction to what performance management is from an officer point of view. We'd love to talk more about it. If you have any questions or wanna reach out to either Chris Spofford or Chris Graham, uh, feel free, our email addresses are here. We uh, thank you for joining this session and uh, look forward to speaking with you in the future.